Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about cyberspace. Yes, this is a term that was first termed, I believe, back with Neuromancer. Now, this is a book that I read as a kid, and it had a huge effect on me. It's a big part of why I am into the stuff I'm into today, and I know I'm not alone in that. In fact, a couple of billionaires we're going to talk about in just a minute were obviously inspired by content such as Neuromancer. On top of that, we also have Ready Player One, probably a more up-to-date and attainable version of what cyberspace is going to be about. And of course, these things all build on each other. And then we also have The Matrix, which, let's be honest, is a little bit less of a happy idea about cyberspace. But again, it kind of furthered the whole concept and genre going forward. Now, there are people behind the scenes that have been pushing to make cyberspace a thing. And, it, and honestly, it is the most intuitive thing ever. We have the World Wide Web and we have games. Now, why don't we gamify the World Wide Web and then we browse the web in 3D? And we tried this years ago with something called VRML. Now, VRML originally stood for Virtual Reality Markup Language because of HTML. Uh, and then they rebranded to Virtual Reality Modeling Language. And the entire idea behind Vermal was to have it so that you could model 3D worlds and navigate between those 3D worlds like you would navigate between web pages. So it had formats in there for you know describing 3D worlds, texture maps, etc. The problem is this was 1995. And in 1995, we had two major problems. The internet was slow and web accelerators didn't exist yet. So the entire idea of Vermal just came you know, 10 years too early, maybe even more so than that. But there are a couple of billionaires out there that have definitely not given up on the concept of cyberspace. And I do think that still, we are going to have some form of cyberspace in the future. One of those billionaires is definitely Mark Zuckerberg. The entire MetaQuest, he has built, he has burned billions and billions and billions of dollars on this. And, and I love the Quest. I actually have multiple Quest iterations up to including uh, the Quest 3. Um, and I can see how this is, you know, again, let's let's flip back a couple of pages here. Quest, look, look familiar at all? If you watch Ready Player One, you can 100% understand where they are going with the Quest hardware. This is going to be the technology that enables us to, um, you know, interact with these 3D worlds going forward. I'm not saying that Quest is going to win, but that is definitely why people are putting as much money into VR as you see. But this is not the only billionaire out there. We also have... Fortnite, Epic Games, they have put so much money into Fortnite, and Fortnite's dreams go way beyond just Fortnite to UEFN. And that's why you're seeing like collaborations with like Lego and Disney to build these giant virtual worlds. Um, also, we've got the Fab Marketplace, which is going to theoretically be like the asset store for the new metaverse going forward. So there are definitely people putting billions upon billions upon billions of dollars into this. And then we also have things like Roblox, which again, it's a 3D game, eco system of where you can go from one world to the other and it's just going to eventually be all tied together and I could see a point where the world of the web and world of games blurs and we play a game and we go from game to game to game and then eventually it's linked together like what we would see with the web. Well today we're going to look at something that implements this in a much 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 smaller scale than everything we've talked about already, and that is the Gates. Now, the Gates is a Godot project. It's a very ambitious project. It is a very early project, so I would not have um, too much expectations for this to take off. They do not have the money or the resources of the big players I just talked about, uh, but it is an interesting project, interestingly enough, that I thought I would share it with you. At the same time, I'm not demonstrating it for reasons I will show you in just a minute. So this is ability to create a basically 3D web browser, but instead of web pages, you have games. And it connects these games together, and those games are written using the Godot game engine. So you create digital worlds, so unlike web pages, the content is displayed in a more interactive and visually rich way, uh, like a video game. Uh, they, so instead of downloading HTML or JavaScript, our browser downloads exported Godot engine projects and runs them in separate tabs. It's also completely free and open source under the MIT license. So um, encouraging ways to share knowledge and experience in a more human way. Uh, so basically, 3D makes more sense than web pages for 2D than sorry, 3D games are more intuitive to interact with than what we got with the 2D web spaces. That's kind of the idea behind it. So things like creating social hubs, uh, blogging and streaming in 3D, sharing knowledge, uh, it's linked like the web, and that is the idea behind it. So with this technology, we'll be able to build a new ecosystem of internet projects and initiate a new wave of startups and innovative ideas. So this is a very bold wording there. Uh, right now it's available Linux, Windows and Mac OS. And this again is a web browser, a 3D web browser built on top of the Godot 
ecosystem. So it is entirely open source. It is under the MIT license. Uh, so you've got a, a couple of different parts of this. You've got the web browser aspect of it. Uh, so this is a free and so open source 3D internet web browser that was built using Godot. So as you can see over here, it's actually built with 93% of this is GD script. Uh, and it's basically just a way of connecting together uh, Godot games and experiences. So you can basically have these portals or links between them uh, and, and move between these different games inside of the web browser. Now, I would need to see things like persistence tracking or where you could carry inventory across or centralized federation and that kind of stuff. Uh, but we do have some demonstrations here. They've got a template available as well uh, for doing things like voice chatting. So third person controller with interpolation on the client, uh, voice over with 3D positioning and UI for changing names and tweaking volume. Uh, so if you want to create your experience and have your multiplayer collaborations with it, the Gates team also has that available. Uh, so you can see uh, examples of how it works, how players interact and so on. And this one, uh, again, is MIT licensed source code that is available. Uh, and then they've also got another bit and this is basically the export tool. So you create your game and auth your game normally uh, using the Godot game engine, and then you export it into, I don't know, the equivalent of HTML that hosts it on a server somewhere, and that is your um, your output from this. Your, so your web page that would link between pages is ultimately generated using this exporter. It's a really neat idea uh, for sure. It's one of those things I'm keeping an eye on. So it's MIT license. It's also incredibly ambitious and the odds of this turning into something big are really small. I'm just gonna be straight up honest on that one. Uh, and then we have other projects like this out there like Core and Mirror working on this as well. Uh, but this seems to be more, again, open source, making the tooling available. Um, and then, you know, people could commit and go with it and go from there. So we'll see uh, where that ultimately goes. Now, the reason why I didn't demonstrate it though, it's something I wanna point out to all of you. This is coming from their documentation. There is no sandboxing yet. Uh, unless you're on Linux. So right now, if you're using the Linux client, there is sandboxing, uh, but it's not fully tested. And on Windows and Mac, no sandbox. That means that whatever you're opening up using this browser can do whatever an installed Godot app could do. And Godot can actually do quite a bit. Remember I did a video a while back about a Godot targeted virus? Well, this would be able to spread those viruses because in all honesty, until this sandbox is fully implemented, uh, would you run a web browser that enabled a web page to do whatever it wanted to your app? Probably not. And that's kind of where we were sitting at with this one right now. But there is a lot of, uh, in, there's an interesting concept here. It's definitely just one of those ones I thought I would make you aware of, uh, but again, it is a pretty early project. If you're interested in it, come on, give them a star. Uh, see if it uh, you know gets more people contributing to it, more people uh, behind it. Again, uh, very early on, it may go absolutely nowhere, but it was interesting enough. I thought I would share it this weekend. So let me know what you think of the gates. Also, let me know what you think of the future. Are we going to have cyberspace and who do you think is going to win? Is it gonna come out of something like like UEFN or Roblox, or is it gonna come out of something like Quest, or is it gonna be an amalgamation of all of them? Let me know, comments down below. I will talk to you all later, goodbye.